about okay. 11 a second. Uh, like I mentioned to you yesterday, uh, we've got, they've got a few questions for us. They've been learning about methods and principles of training um, and things like that. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, um, okay. if that's all right, with regards to your, your lifestyle and your training routine itself. Um, no worries. So I'll, I'll put the camera on to them, guys. Okay. Say hello. Wait, guys. Okay. <laughs> Say hello. Um, Alright then, Adam, first up we've got uh, Megan, she's got a question for you. Uh, so, off you go, Megs. Right, how does your training differ from pre Olympics and post Olympics? Um, training pre Olympics was, was a lot harder than post Olympics. Pre Olympics, uh, you, you, you're in that stage of training where you're just getting fit, um, you're getting your body really tired, so you get stronger and stronger, so you're doing a lot of like a lot of uh, speed endurance work and cardiovascular endurance work and getting your muscles strong and post Olympics is obviously where you've done the hard work so you're just maintaining your form and uh, keeping yourself ticking over for the rest of the races you've got in the season. Alright, thanks for that one. Uh, Jack, Jack's up next. What's your question Jack? Um, how does your training differ from being a professional footballer to now? Um, training from being a footballer is a lot different to being an athlete. Uh, as a football player, you, you use a lot more uh, cardiovascular endurance and you need to be a lot fitter. Like for, for me, as an athlete, I'm only really running 100, 200 metres, so done in oh, 10, 10 and 20 seconds. So the training's a lot different. You've got to be a lot more powerful as a, as a sprinter and you've got to be able to convert, convert that power to speed. And you do a lot more, a lot more technique work as, as a sprinter, work you're running. Oh, as a footballer, it's not. If you see run, footballers run, they've not really got the best of technique. Uh. <laughs> cool. Um, that one. Uh, Tom, Tom's got the next question. How frequent do you train? Is this all or all throughout the year? Uh, I'm training basically every day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, up to Saturday. Um, Sunday off, which is good. And yeah, because I'm at uni as well, so I'm trying to balance balance the two. So certain days I might not have to go into training because I do have uni, and other days I I go to training in the morning, then go to then go to uni, then and then go training afterwards. So it, it really does depend uh, on the school year. So what what time would your day start then, Adam? What time would you be up, and what time would you have to be at the track to start your training? Okay, for this morning I was up at. Uh, at 5.15 this morning, I had to get to the track for half six, do my session, leave by eight o'clock, get to uni for nine. I've been at uni till half twelve today, and then I've been at the gym just doing my weights, and then I've come back here and now I'm on to you, so quite early. Yeah, yeah, um, we really appreciate the time that you've given. It's not a problem, not a problem. Brilliant. Uh, next question, Jess? What do you do to overload your training, Adam, in order to improve? So, how how does your training? How is it progressively overloaded? How does it make fun? Yeah, uh, doing a lot of the overloading in the winter season, during the winter season, so this year, uh, in the gym and in, in, in the running. So you get your body, like I said before, you get your body used to used to that hard work, and you get a lot. It may be hard, you've got a lot of pain, but uh, it just makes it easier, and you get yourself a lot fitter for when you actually need to be in the season running and be fully fit and stuff. So. Do a lot of the overloaded training in the gym, and so you do a heavy gym session, then come out the next day, run really quick, and then maybe do another gym session. That that thing just to get your muscles built up stronger. Oh, brilliant. Um, Sean is up next. Have you ever experienced a reversibility principle? If so, what did you notice? Did you say the reversibility principle? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of I think obviously all, all athletes when they have the time off, you get you feel that you feel that. Um, that coming to effect where you, you haven't trained and a lot of, and in, in this sport it's very very easy to pick up an injury and you can miss one week or two weeks so there's ways around it that, that we do we do we can, you can do it on the bike or in the pool but yeah if you, if you if you get a little injury or something and you miss a bit of training then you you feel the you feel the effects of that and like for my, myself I've just been a month injured and I'm trying to get back into fitness to get my fitness back now and it's quite hard but yeah. So. You mentioned there then, Adam, that you uh, you've done a bit of bike training and training the pool, so cross training. Um, how yeah. does how 
how does that obviously then um, keep your fitness levels up and things? How beneficial is that to you? No, oh, it's very, very beneficial. Obviously, we'd like to we'd like to be on the track at running, but we do we do lots of different uh, variations of training. We go we run up hills like hill training. We we get in the pool for more um, explosiveness, like jumping in and out of the pool or, or swimming to get to get your your endurance up and on the bike. Just a um, we either do it on the bike or we do something called tempo running, which you, which you use when you're in your in your race season, and that just that just keeps your body body level up. It keeps you ticking over. It keeps your make sure you're using the aerobic energy system to the max, and it broadens sort of on the line of that and using aerobic as well. So you just use that to keep yourself ticking over and keep yourself fit. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Lou says it next. Yeah. And what different types of training do you do? Sorry, what was that? What different types of training? Uh, I do uh, many different types. I do many different types of training and stuff. I do uh, things like circuit training, and, and uh, I do a bit of uh, continuous training. We don't do that much continuous training because we don't really need to be that cardiovascular uh, to be that fit, to have that endurance. But we do a little bit. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, we do a bit of barbell. But we use different conditions and stuff like. Uh, Running up hills or running on grass or running on sand, which is which is quite hard. Um, weight training, do weight training. Um, I'm trying to remember what you're testing me here. Um, uh, yeah, that, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's obvious that you do quite a few different training methods, but yeah. each one is applied specifically to like a skill related principle. Yeah. Um, Courtney, then I think you're next. Like, how does your training adhere to the specificity principle? How does your training adhere to the specificity principle, Adam? So how is it how, how is it specific uh, to the hundred meters? Some of the stuff you do. Okay. Yeah, we do. I do a lot of work for that. Obviously, you have got to be short. You got to do short, sharp stuff. You got to be very explosive and very powerful. So you do a lot of plyometrics and hurdle work and bounds and leaps to try and increase that and obviously you've got to lift quite heavy in the gym so you've got to get your muscles strong and um, and the, the running we do is quite long the reps that we do but it's getting fit to run 100 metres and the 200 metres and, and not die towards the end of the race to try and maintain your form and, and run a quick time Alright, yeah, nice one um, uh, Owen, I think you've got one again next How do you stop yourself from born with the training? Wood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it depends. It really depends on the type of person you are. Obviously. Uh, if you was the question, how, what? How do you stop yourself getting bored? Yeah. How, how do you stop yourself becoming bored when training? Yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Training can be quite boring. Uh, but it depends what you're in. What you're in the sport for. Obviously, I'm in it. So I want, I want to do well. So I, I just commit to it. Motivate myself by by committing to it, committing to it like that, and you just you mix it with other things. Obviously, like I said, I'm at university and I do other things like that. I chill out with my mates and quite into music and stuff like that. So you just mix it up instead of making your whole life about about that type of sport thing. Yeah, cool. Uh, a couple more then, I think. Uh, Nicole. Okay, um, if you if you like want to come become quicker and you're quite serious about it, obviously you should like maybe join join a local club. But if you're not really that serious and you just want to have it around quicker, uh, working your technique. Your arms are very very important. A lot of people underestimate your arms in running, and when you see people running, they're more legs. But the harder your arms pump and the harder your arms work, the quicker your legs are going. So I think arms are very important and getting your good technique and just and it literally just. At the beginning of your race, if you stay really low and, and in your dry phase and then slowly come out, then you'll, you'll notice yourself getting a lot quicker. So just work with your technique and Brilliant. Uh, progress that. Uh, and Phil, I think you've got one out here as well. Uh, what advice would you give to a budding athlete? Uh, I'd, I'd say to anyone who wants to become an athlete in any sport, not just athletics, so if you're, uh, if you're a young footballer or or gymnast, or whatever you want to, whatever you want to be, I'd say 
take it slow and develop at your own pace. Like everyone is different. Like there's seven billion people on the planet, now everyone's the same. So you're gonna develop at your own pace. And some people peak early, some people peak later. Which one in life? It just you've got to take your time, work hard, and commit to commit to what you want to do. And, and if you really do want to do it, you'll make sacrifices that that are hard. Like you see, maybe your friends will do something else, go out and party. But if you wanna really want to commit to something and really want to be successful, you really gotta give it. 100%. Um, and then perhaps the final one then for me, Adam. Uh, yeah. A year ago, uh, I think it was about still probably a professional footballer for Dagenham. Um, yeah. And what, how come we quit football? What, what made you change your mind from football to, to taking the leap and becoming an, uh, an athlete? Uh, yeah, um, basically I'm at football, they offered me a professional contract and stuff, but I was sort of ranked for the school and stuff and I was quite doing quite well, so... They said to me, if I had a professional, a professional contract, I couldn't carry on with my education. I couldn't um, go to university and stuff, and I couldn't do athletics anymore. So just sat down with my mum and dad, and they just said, we'd like you to go to university, because later on in life, say you get injured in football, you won't really be able to do much much else apart from that, unless you have a degree. And that's, that's the same thing. If you need a degree, and you need a degree. So we'll make sure you get that. So they just said, why not try uh, athletics for the for the rest of the year. This was in January last year. Why not try athletics for the rest of the year and see how it goes? So then I joined up with a, a training group and I started training, worked hard, and uh, yeah, ran quite quick. Yeah. Um, and then oh, I don't know. One last one. Just as a, um, a, an insight into to the actual Olympics and racing and, and and what it was like actually to compete in the Olympic Stadium. Yeah. That was. There's no other feeling. Like running at the Olympic Stadium, you got 80,000 80, people, British people, like McGregor and British screaming for you because you're the British athlete and you're lining up, and it's it's a weird feeling. You're in, you're in what what I think psychologists call it a flow state where you don't really remember too much. You're like so switched on and you're in autopilot mode. But when you run your race and you, you run against the quickest men in the world and you sort of look look back and you stand there and you realise that. You're an Olympian, and you're just, uh, no one can ever take that away from you. Like you can win a medal, that can get stolen, whatever. But the fact that you've been been at the Olympics, no one can ever say to you, "That hasn't happened." And it's just the best feeling in the world. And a uh, feeling that I wouldn't understand why anyone would want to experience. Um, thank you very much, Adam, for your time again this afternoon. It's been so no If we would uh, just put our hands together. you've got a busy schedule or something to get off to tonight as um, I'll be in touch and we'll have to go for another curry in uh, Scrunny one night with Nath, mate. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Cheers. Thank you for your time. Thank you very I'll much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. You know, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We've got about um, 20 minutes. Get on to, uh, go to one of the computers, please. And uh, I'll talk to you again.